Learn English with stories. I made it. I made it. Your mother trained you well. Papa, is it you, Papa? Is it really you? Yes, my sweet Elena, it is really me. We ran to each other, and even though I had never seen or known him, I could feel his love for me within that strong and long embrace. Oh, Elena, oh, how I've longed to see you. Oh, Papa, I am so scared, so scared. I was shaking and crying uncontrollably. I don't know what is happening. I don't know what's going on. I know, my dear child, I know. Your mother and I are so incredibly sorry that things are this way for you, but everything will be okay very soon. Elena, I know this is extremely difficult, but he held me tighter. Please try to calm down and listen carefully. I have much to say and very little time. You must focus. His words did not console me. Those were the very words of my mother, and nothing good followed them. He held me for a moment longer, and then we sat down on a stack of hay inside the barn. This barn had been the imaginary safe haven for Mom and me, but now it was a real safe haven for me and my father. Elena, how many men were chasing you? What did they look like? Do they have the necklace? Only one, Papa. My father gave a sigh of relief. He had dark brown hair, I continued, brown eyes, and he wore a black jacket and jeans. His shoes were blue and white. No, he doesn't have the necklace. I hid it in our secret hiding place. Even under this extreme circumstance, my father smiled. Such details. Your mother did indeed train you well. But for what, Papa? For what? I will tell you as much as I can until he gets here. Until who gets here? The man who was chasing you, he will be here eventually. His partner found me here, and so, no doubt, he will find us soon. What are we going to do? Where is his partner? My father pointed over at a pile of leaves, and I gasped. Don't worry, Elena. He's fine. I'm not the kind of person to hurt others, even under this circumstance. I needed him unconscious until you got here, and we could plan our escape. He's tied up and hidden for now. It's almost over. After all of these years, it's almost over. It's unbelievable that your mother's plan worked. It took a few years longer than we had hoped, but it actually is going to work. I had no words. I just kept staring at him, still in a daze. He continued, From my understanding, after all of these years, there are only two left who are actually searching for the necklace. That's one good thing about the situation. The other good thing is that the necklace is still in our possession. We can give it to the authorities and we will be free. Free, I thought. 
but still I kept silent. But I am worried about my friend Luke. I haven't heard from him since he got off of the train ride with you. This time I did speak up. There was no one with me on the train ride. My father smiled. Oh, he was there. He's skilled at being invisible. He is a very good friend of mine, the only friend that I have had for the past 15 years. He has been watching over you and your mother since all of this happened. He has been reporting back to me often on how you two are doing, and he has been keeping up with those who are trying to find you. He's the one who brought you the package with the thumb drive. Really? I asked. He seemed so familiar to me. Have we met before? No, you didn't officially meet, but the day before your mother... He stopped and paused for a second. I sat imagining how difficult it must have been for him to be so far away when Mom died. I am so sorry, Papa. It must have been so terrible for you. His eyes were full of intense pain. Later, I came to know that the pain was more for me than for him. He continued, Luke came to the house the day before to see your mother. You probably saw him then. Anyway, Luke and I thought that it would be okay for him to bring you the package. We didn't think that you would recognize him. My father stopped and chuckled. He reported back to me that you had indeed detected something. He was also on the plane. Are you sure that he's a good friend, Papa? Because he seems so, so, well, he doesn't seem like a good guy. My father's laugh was louder than he wanted it to be. He stopped and remembered that he was supposed to be on the watch. He's a very good man, Elena. His face seems otherwise, but he's the best friend that anyone could have. He sacrificed so much for us. No, Elena, he's not the bad guy, but I am worried. We have lost contact. That man he pointed over to the leaves, was not supposed to find me here, and Luke was supposed to get to the cabin before you in order to keep you safe from the other one. Your mother was right in preparing you like she did. She prepared for every single thing that could go wrong, except for... He didn't finish. He didn't have to. I knew what he would say. But Papa, she did prepare for it. I am here because of her. She made a video ahead of time telling me to come here. But... There is one thing that I couldn't figure out until now. How did she prepare for the package to come in the mail on the day that I turned 18? How could she possibly have done that? Now I know. My father's expression changed, and he became very tense. How? he asked slowly. She gave it to Luke, I said. You said that Luke came the day before she died. She must have recorded it that day. My father was silent. His tense look from a few seconds ago 
and now his sigh of relief. What did it mean? He would have known all of these facts already. Yes, he knew that my mother prepared me well, but he didn't know just how well. Something wasn't right. Anyway, he quickly continued, Luke has been watching over you ever since you two left the island. What do you mean, Papa? Mom told me that I was from Myanmar, but I didn't know that I had ever lived on this island. Yes, Elena, you were born here, right here on this island. But you and your mother had to leave when you were only three years old. That's why you don't remember me or this island. I started to shake again. But why? Why did we have to leave? Why didn't you come with us, Papa? Why did I have to live without a father? Especially when Mom died. Why didn't you come to me? That was five years ago. He held back his tears, hugged me tight once again, and then he went to stand near the barn door. Come and sit over here near me, Elena, and I will tell you about the emerald necklace. After checking outside, he began. I used to work at the Jim's Museum in the city. I worked in security, and I was good at my job. I was very skilled at detecting things that no one else could, and so I prevented the museum from being robbed many times. I smiled. We were all just alike. Him, my mom, and me, we were the best detectives. My father smiled at me, knowing my thoughts. Yes, Elena, we all are good detectives, but at that time, I wished with all of my heart that I was not a good detective. What happened, Papa? My boss, Robert, head of security, was out of town for the week. He put me in charge. One day, I became suspicious of two other security guards, Joseph and Benjamin. By the way, that's Joseph over there under the leaves. That entire day, I noticed that they had become very secretive and had been in areas of the museum that they had no right to be in. They knew that I could detect the slightest thing, so they were extremely cautious, but not cautious enough. I found out that they were actually planning to rob the museum, but they wanted only one thing, the emerald necklace. This emerald necklace came from the France Museum and was to be on display for a short time in Myanmar. It is worth millions. I notified my boss immediately, and he told me to stay there and that he would alert the authorities. Close the museum early, remove the necklace from the display case, and take it to the safe. His orders were clear. So I did as he said. I closed the museum, and after those two guards had left, I removed the emerald from its case and took it to the safe. Well, while I was in the safe room, I felt that something just wasn't right. I didn't know what it was, but something just was not right. So, while I was there, I switched on the screens that monitored the museum, and I was shocked. I 
I was getting extremely nervous. What did you see, Papa? I was shocked to see not only my boss, who was supposed to be out of town, but also the two security guards standing outside of his office. They were talking, and so I quickly turned on the sound. I heard my boss say, I told you guys to be careful. This was supposed to be easy. We take the necklace and blame Philip. Who's Philip? I interrupted. My father looked surprised, but then realized that I would not have known. I am Philip, Elena. He paused a second, then continued. Needless to say, I was in complete shock. We had worked with each other for several years, and I thought we were friends. What do we do now? I heard Benjamin ask. This must be done tonight. I've been waiting years to get my hands on that emerald and nothing, absolutely nothing, is going to stand in my way, my boss said. There is only one thing to do. Understood, boss. Benjamin left the office, but then turned back asking, What about his family? My boss answer shocked me even more. The story will be that he disappeared with the necklace along with his family. Papa, you said that there are only two men left looking for the necklace, but what about your former boss? He died a few years ago. He had a heart attack. Just then, my father continued, Robert saw the green as well as the yellow light on the wall of his office flashing. That signified that the cameras and the sound were on. My father stopped. His expression told me that he was sadly reliving that time of long ago, but I needed him to continue. Papa, I whispered. He stared at me sadly. My boss had many, many friends who held very high positions in the city, and so I wouldn't have a chance at proving my innocence. The only thing that could buy me some time in trying to save my family was to run with the necklace, so I ran. You're a very fast runner, aren't you? I asked him. He managed a small smile. Yes, Elena, I am a very fast runner. Please continue, Papa. You and Karina were in the park, so I ran there to get you. Who's Karina? I interrupted once again. My father again had a look of surprise on his face, then one of understanding. Elena, I know this is a lot for you to have to know all at one time. Who's Karina, Papa? Karina is your mother's real name, Elena. I was stunned. No, Papa, her name is Olivia. Elena, in order to get you two out of the country without being quickly detected and to keep you safe at your destination, you two had to have different names. My friend Luke was able to arrange all of it.
So what's my real name? I held my breath because I really loved my name. I thought it was the most perfect name. Your name is Elena. You only had to take on a new identity until you got to your destination. After you two arrived, my father paused for what seemed like an eternity before speaking. We faked your death, Elena. We reasoned that if you no longer existed and your mother had a new identity, and if you guys lived away from a city, you would be safe. He stopped and stared at me, wondering how I was handling all of this. Everything was starting to make sense. We did live far away from others. I didn't go to public school. Mom had taught me at home. We had no friends. Mom would always go on errands alone. We had no relatives except for my aunt and cousins, who probably weren't really my cousins at all. Dare I ask? My Aunt Vivian? His gaze downward told me that my suspicions were correct. I slowly closed my eyes and shook my head, but how could I be angry? Their only thought was protecting me, protecting us. Your Aunt Vivian is Luke's sister, and her kids became your cousins so that you could have some companionship. Elena... Please understand that it was the only way. Every day of my life since this happened, I have wondered if I did the right thing. Not one day has passed that I have not wondered if I could have done something different, but I can't think of any other way, Elena. I can't. These men, they are dangerous. But why couldn't you come with us? He paused again. I went to prison, Elena. You went to prison, but you were innocent. That was the only way for Luke to have time to get you out of the country. The necklace had to go with you. I thought about going to the police with the necklace, but my boss was friends with all of them. We couldn't trust anyone. Luke is an investigator, and he was already in the middle of an investigation involving criminal activities concerning the police. So if the police were involved, they would just take the necklace and get rid of me. I just could not take that chance. My original plan was to hide and then to join you two after a while, but my face was everywhere on the local news, on the national and international news, just everywhere. And there was a huge reward for my capture. I couldn't take a chance trying to leave the country. The best way to keep you two safe was to turn myself in. I thought maybe if they thought that I hid the necklace, they wouldn't try to find you two. Luke knew of a very good lawyer, so I turned myself in and told the truth about everything that had happened all the way up until I fled from the museum. I did not tell them that I took the necklace, nor did I tell them where you two were. There was a trial, and I lost. I told your mother to move on with her life and to forget about me. She would never accept that and was always searching for a way to fix the situation. Over the years, Benjamin and Joseph continued searching for you two. My friend Luke continued to keep you two safe and when they were getting close to your mother, he would find a way to lead them astray.
I don't know how I could ever repay him. Over the years, they would go from place to place, robbing museums. As Luke followed them, he finally had enough evidence to go to the authorities. Finally, I was released. I began to cry uncontrollably. I miss mom, papa. I still miss mom. My father held me tight. Elena, there's something I have to tell you about your mother. And the tears that he had been trying to hold back finally came through. And so we didn't hear the footsteps outside of the barn. Well, well, well. That's a very good story, Philip. A very good story. Is this man trying to convince you that he is your father? Trying to get his hands on the emerald necklace? He's not your father, girl. Come with me and I will take you to him. And then you will hand over that necklace. Do you understand me? Now help me tie this man up. My father didn't move. I, however, knew what to do. I quickly grabbed the rope and helped him tie up my father. Elena, what are you doing? Elena, no! I am your father. Elena, look at me. Look at me. But I could not look at him. I needed to convince the man in the black jacket that I believed that he was not my father. In order to save my father, I went with the man and left my father behind, hoping that he quickly realized how loosely I had tied his hands behind his back and also hoping that he would be in time to save me. The birds in the trees scattered at the sounds of my father's screams that could still be heard from a distance away. Helena. We boarded the motorboat at the bottom of the hill. Where is the necklace? he asked as he started the engine. I thought you were taking me to my father, I said. He guided the boat easily through the calm waters. Where is the necklace, he repeated. It's on the other side of the island, I answered him casually. Where on the other side of the island? Near the tower. I answered again calmly. He just stared at me. You look a lot like your mother. I kept silent. So, you're not talking to me? He asked sarcastically. Again, I kept silent, not knowing my next move. I had no plan. He continued talking. Everyone on this island loved your mother. She was the most kind, generous person that I have ever known. We were all sorry to hear about the accident. Accident, I finally spoke. Mom died of sickness. What are you talking about? I was angry. Sickness, 
he asked. What are you talking about? Let's just get to the tower. The huge rock came out of nowhere and the boat crashed into it. We both flipped out and fell into the water. I quickly swam up to the surface and looked around for him. He was nowhere. There was no sign of him, nor was there any sight of land. The boat was shattered, and so I started swimming, hoping that someone would see me and save me. I don't know how long I swam. I could hear my mom's voice, Swim, Elena, swim! But I could no longer swim. I floated. Sorry, Mom, I have failed you. I could not save my father, nor can I save myself. I don't know how long I lay floating on top of the water when suddenly I heard my father's voice. Elena! Elena! He was frantic, but there was nothing that I could do. I had no strength. I felt his strong arms pull me from the water. When I woke up, I was in the cabin, wrapped in a blanket. My father sat me up and gave me a warm drink. It was hot chocolate, and it was delicious. Thank you, Papa. Do you like it? He asked me. Yes, Papa. It tastes just like the hot chocolate Mom and I used to make. My entire being ached for her. Elena, if you are feeling ready, I need to tell you about your mother. The man on the boat said that my mom didn't die of sickness. What does he mean? What is he talking about? That is true, Elena. She did not die of sickness. He sat down beside me on the bed. Five years ago, shortly before my release, Luke became very ill. He had to be hospitalized for a long time. When he was completely well, he found out that Benjamin and Joseph had found your mom's location. He had to act quickly. Benjamin and Joseph still didn't know about you. Luke communicated with me, and we made the decision to... Fake her death? I quickly interrupted. I sat up. You faked her death as you faked mine? Mom is alive? Try to relax, precious. Let me finish. Oh, please, Papa. Please finish. I was shaking all over. Yes, Luke faked her death and brought her here, but... But what, Papa? All of the stress of leaving you and your sadness over losing her caused her to really get sick. She had a nervous breakdown and had to be hospitalized. It was a severe breakdown. She didn't know who she was or where she was. After I was released and went to her, she didn't even know who I was. When she was shown pictures of you, she would smile, but we had no way of knowing if she really knew who you were.
and the men were now keeping a close eye on your Aunt Vivian, and it was just too dangerous to bring you here. We had to wait. After a few years, your mother gradually began to recover. Then she had a full recovery, remembering everything. A few months before you turned 18, she was well enough to help me plan to get you here. But when she gave me the necklace, she said that I couldn't wear it until I was 18. How could she have known that? She didn't know. She only guessed that it could possibly take that long for things to work out because I would be released from prison about that time. Luke had all of the information he needed to go to the police. Elena, it was your mother who sent you the letter to come here. It was your mother who planned it all. So, my dear sweet Elena, that is the mystery of the emerald necklace, that necklace that I wish I had never lay eyes upon. I sat up again. I no longer care to hear any more of the story. I only wanted him to say that my mother was alive. So she is alive? Where is she? My father's tears were flowing and he finally said, Well, I myself am not very good at making hot chocolate. I could hear the sobs of someone in the distance. The strength that I lacked just moments before ran through me. I jumped up out of the bed and before I could even make it to the door, she walked in. Mom! 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 Is it really you? I ran into her arms, and our hugs and our tears were endless. I examined her face, her eyes, her nose, her hair. It was really her. It was my mom. She was here. She was really here. Mom. Mom. Oh, Mom. Mom. Am I dreaming? I turned to my father. Am I dreaming, Papa? Am I dreaming? Luke's investigation was so thorough that the arrests were quick. Those involved in the attempted robbery of the emerald necklace were many. Many high officials, including the owner of the museum in France, were arrested. Many policemen were arrested. They were all put on trial and sent to prison. My father was given a national public apology and he and Luke were given a huge reward for keeping the emerald safe. A special celebration was held and we all were invited to that special occasion.
After 15 years of planning, mom had made what seemed impossible, possible. We were finally together as a family, and the mystery of the emerald necklace was now only a distant memory. Our memories as a family, however, were only beginning. There were many, many relatives to meet and come to know. My grandparents, my cousins, my aunts, and my uncles. I treasure each new memory that is made, and I treasure my life with my family here on Paradise Island.